Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the 1954 Dodge Royal 500 convertible from Model House. Now this kit uh, was from the most respected name in resin casting. And although they went out of business in 2018, they were a godsend to us modelers by capturing some of the early promos and earliest kits that were never reissued. Now, I've never seen a 1954 model of this uh, particular car um, made in, in either a promo style or a kit, uh, but it looks like this has been uh, modified from uh, other another kit uh, to uh, come up with what is really uh, the re you know, the reinstatement of the car that paced the 1954 uh, Indianapolis 500. Even as you see here, uh, the the uh, mock-up of the model at the bottom uh, will hopefully look like the real car that you see on the top photo here. And um, it'll be about seven and three quarter inches long, two and three quarter inches wide, and two inches high when we're finished. And so, there are quite a few modifications that need to be made for a realistic uh, model of the pace car. And intrinsic to resin casting itself, there are issues that you'll run into that you probably won't find on styrene type kits. So we'll be examining those issues and how to uh, deal with those, as well as constructing a resin kit. And by the way, they don't come with instructions. So you're basically on your own, but we'll pay, take you through the paces and show you how to complete your model. Now, like I mentioned, here is the layout of the parts that you get in a model house kit. Now, they did come with various amounts of these accoutrements, but as you can see, there are chrome bumpers, wheel covers, tires. There's even a clear, um, you know, uh, lens there, a vacuum formed glass for your windshield. But um, you'll still find that there are issues intrinsic uh, in resin casting, there will be air bubbles even found in these kits uh, that need to be opened up and filled uh, and then smoothed over, as well as the fact that you can't use regular glue uh, on resin kits. You have to use um, uh, cryanoacrylate type glue, CAs, or uh, epoxy two-part uh, resins in order to glue the parts together. Additionally, you're going to want to take some cleanup precautions uh, even though these are very clean, very little flash on the model house kits, that means they've probably been trimmed already. Uh, you may get a resin casting uh, where the windows are all filled in, etc. Here are the basic uh, decals we'll be using for the side script uh, um, from uh, Fred Cady, who was uh, another blessing to the modeling world. Um, he stopped uh, making these too, so you have to find them uh, where you can. It also includes um, script work that only came on the officials' cars, not on the actual pace cars, and we won't be using those. Additionally, we'll be using uh, other uh, decals on the body, etc., that um, we're going to have to get creative with, uh, and we'll have to make those on an inkjet uh, color printer. Here is another look at the um, mock-up, and as you can see, the, the convertible uh, up top, or um, boot cover there looks looks a little out of scale we'll have to do some work on that and if you're wondering what that thing is uh, sticking out of the back with a big hole in it that is the extension for what they called the continental kit where um, premium uh, kits or cars had their spare tires mounted the first thing that you should do when you're working with a resin kit is take all the resin pieces and soak them in a bleaching agent like this, uh, Black Magic Bleach White. This is a product that I use, but there are others. After uh, a few hours, um, turn all the parts over to make sure that you get all of the surfaces, uh, especially the ones that are being painted, and let this soak overnight to get all of the resins and oils off of the casting. The next thing that you should do is soak the parts in some warm soapy water, some mild soap like a dish detergent, and scrub them to get all the bleach white off of the casting. I don't know if the chassis that was supplied with the uh, body here came with the body originally or not. It's a uh, an old screw bottom type of uh, 
chassis that used to come in the old promo cars they handed out at dealerships. As you can see here, one of the things in script uh, on the oil pan says 6,000 miles for changes, for oil changes. So uh, that's advertising for the real car. But we're not going to use the chassis other than to, you know, mount everything uh, on the, in the body and, and use it to, to put the wheels um, in place. Uh, it will get very little attention here. After the body has been thoroughly dried, I added some um, half round evergreen stock to replicate the, um, the styling arrow trims there just below the, the window sills. I had also drilled some holes for the uh, door handles which I shaved off of the body um, because they were more than no more than just little blobs. Uh, so I removed those but um, as the hole was too big I just filled it with some styrene rod stock and glued it in place and then smoothed it over with some putty. The original car that was used uh, to make this uh, resin casting must have been very rare because as you can see between the black lines here on the right uh, diagonal post uh, it was broken. The windshield frame was broken right off and on the upright there that um, patch of black is just above another break where it had been glued back together uh, to make the casting. Another thing that you'll quite often run into with these um, castings is that the, the wheel wells uh, are very thick. Uh, they, they're much thicker than required and, and need to be um, usually kind of trimmed down. I use a rotary tool to, uh, to make these a little thinner and more realistic. I deemed that the um, script work and the nose piece just underneath the uh, hood ornament there was a little bit out of scale. It was a little too large and it had a large bubble uh, on the left side as you see here uh, right at the end of it. So I, um, I chiseled it off uh, with a sharp um, hobby chisel and then sanded it clean and the tape there is uh, meant to keep from accidentally uh, using a file or something and scraping you know the rest of the body. I used a, a, a copy uh, of an image of the both the front and back uh, plates and I printed those out uh, and I scaled them to make sure they were the same size and I'll be using that to uh, make a pattern for replacement. I glued the uh, emblems that, that I had printed out on a couple of sheets of strip styrene uh, from Evergreen about the right thickness and uh, I glued them together and then I uh, trimmed it so that I could get the V8 points down at the bottom there and that'll serve as the replacement. I used some super glue to glue the uh, front plate into position on the front of the hood but I didn't like the way it finally settled so I ended up removing it uh, and uh, using some uh, epoxy glue to put it into place. Here you see the uh, rear key plate that was uh, uh, made from the, in the same process with some strip stock and also the um, the large hole there for the um, uh, spare tire and cover will be uh, modified uh, but there's also uh, some missing details here for the mechanism that's used to move the tire out of the way to get at the trunk um, also it, it was a little misshapen so you I needed to clean that up and the dark spot on the right there uh, that is um, uh, where there's um, a lever that uh, moves into position and we'll just use a decal to recreate that. The uh, black sharpie here is used to um, define where we're going to cut that open uh, as um, this uh, that's how it appears on the real vehicle. Uh, that, that portion is open so we'll modify that. The two holes you see here uh, were drilled in uh, to uh, allow for the uh, replacement of the two little blobs that were, that were there uh, and those are actually um, either um, blanks or um, backup lights uh, with a lens so we're going to modify uh, those units and, and put those in place later. Uh, note too the, the black line on the tail lights uh, they're not exactly the way uh, the original car was so we're going to modify that a little bit. And here you see the um, the spare tire as it's mounted um, the way uh, that the unit uh, comes uh, and um, it's a little it was a little bit tight uh, so after the removal of, of the um, uh, you know that portion in the back and a little bit of um, massaging and 
finishing up the large hole, uh, it uh, fits a lot better into position and it's a lot lower the way the actual car was. While I was working in the back, I fashioned the uh, release lever for the tire mechanism um, and uh, the bottom of that will be trimmed off uh, to appropriate size later on. It's just mocked up here for um, um, looks. Also, I had to cut a relief in the back of that shelf in order to uh, place it in where it would be. I also noticed on the real car, uh, there was some ribbing on the, um, the shelf here for the uh, county kit. So I used some more of that um, half round and used uh, some thin uh, super glue to glue them into position uh, on the back plate. With the uh, three ribs in position, uh, I glued them uh, into place there, you know, with all with the uh, thin super glue and let that set up. Later on, I'll cut the um, ones out of the center there uh, to mount the spare tire into that opening. The windshield visors were another issue. They were way too thick and um, so you see the markings there. Uh, they're about uh, three times the thickness uh, of scale visors and uh, as you can see here they had a large uh, bubble in the base and they were very poorly um, finished uh, so there was uh, no uh, doubt about it. Um, I had to remove those. Uh, they, they, um, they had to come off and be replaced. I used my Dremel tool with a rotary cutter and uh, I cut the um, I cut them off close to uh, the windshield frame, and then I used uh, a drum sander in the same Dremel tool and smoothed those out with a nice uh, contour. Now you have to be careful and hold that uh, windshield frame in place on the opposite side to make sure you don't break it because it's very fragile, having removed um, the strength that was given uh, by those visors. Having removed the visors. Uh, I did some cleanup on the frame itself. They're pretty rough uh, as I've found in most of your uh, resin kits so you'll want to clean those up for a nice clean look because it's convertible. Another issue that I found was a large bubble in the uh, headlight bezel and uh, that either had to be uh, drilled out and then filled with stock and then shaped or I just drilled them out completely uh, and found uh, some replacements for them. Well, once again after drilling uh, the um, the holes and the headlights out I used the rotary um, uh, tool, a rotary tool grinder in my in my Dremel tool and uh, gave it a nice round shaping. I found another issue, a uh, molding issue on the kit and uh, I you can see it here I had to um, clean that up by actually shortening that bumper extension which was more realistic anyway and rounding that off and filling in some of the uh, bumper there in the back because you can actually kind of see that uh, uh, if you turn the car over you can see that plate uh, so you want a nice clean look there too. You can see the small circle there on the right side of this shot um, that's where the antenna would go uh, if I choose to put one in but also I'm showing you the hood uh, the hood gap here is just uh, enormous. So uh, it's it's like three times as wide uh, as the door jams. Um, so uh, as you can see on the right side there, it almost goes away with some of my favorite filler. This is just um, thinned white glue, uh, and you just add this repeatedly, and then sand off any extra extra you can, or you can clean it off right away to make it um, less uh, you know pronounced. But um, it was just too large, so I, I had to. Uh, kind of dulled down the size of that uh, gap. In the back side I used uh, some rod stock and tube stock along with a small lens from the parts bin uh, and then uh, one of the caps uh, for the, um, the backup lights. Now one of these was far as I can tell just a, a blank a filler and that was on the left side and the one on the right side actually had a backup lens. Now you have to know that back in uh, this time period backup lenses were optional not, they didn't come just standard on a car. Well, you can see that at this point it's starting to look uh, much cleaner. Um, the uh, the big gap in the hood, a lot of the structural details of the, you know, the visors and uh, uh, the trim has been replaced and the um, Conti um, ledge back there is looking pretty good. Now, uh, you should get an appreciation of this. These are the about the best resin castings available and still there's a lot of work to be done. 
um, even just cleaning things up. Now, once we get the structural stuff done, then we can work on the uh, small details as well. And now you can see here the repositioned uh, front plate uh, on the hood, just under the hood ornament. Also, um, there's uh, patches of um, putty that's been uh, thinned uh, to um, clean up all the tiny little details, uh, any marks that you've made as you are working on it, and any of the uh, small blemishes that you find on the vehicle. Uh, and then go ahead and uh, smooth those out with some fine uh, grits of sandpaper. And finally, when you're done, it's time for a nice uh, coat of uh, dark gray primer. And the reason for that is because it'll point out more issues for you to fix. And don't forget those uh, parts on the underside that are exposed as well as the windshield frame. And uh, wherever there's a uh, air bubble or a pinhole, you'll want to um, uh, fill those in with a little putty, uh, thinned putty. Or, by the way, I use a little acetone to thin uh, 3M body putty for automotive use. And, or uh, some super glue. You can either uh, use a gel type or uh, you can add uh, talcum powder to thin stuff. Uh, pack it in there and... Clean it off before it gets to be about a half hour old or it's too hard then. Here's an example of the primer pointing out more issues. Uh, there was another air bubble there that I didn't notice earlier, uh, but with the primer on it, it stuck right out. So I opened it up and then filled that with some putty to clean her up. Now, lest you think you are done, primer actually acts as a, um, a filler for very small blemishes and de details. So. Now it's time to sand uh, quite a bit of it back off uh, to just leave enough to fill those little shallows like uh, the ones that were on the door uh, and um, to kind of clean things up. So go ahead and use uh, successively finer grits to clean up any blemishes that you see um, lurking in the, uh, in the primed car. Next, uh, we're going to give it a, a couple of light coats of white primer because I'm using a very light color for this car and then a, a good uh, medium wet coat uh, to give it a good base for the paint and uh, that's it for this installment um, and I hope you'll uh, enjoy us for part two where we'll wrap things up with the interior and decals etc and show you how to paint this model but don't be discouraged um, because this is one of the um, one of the ways to get subject matter that you wouldn't normally find in a regular kit. Uh, and since subject matter is king, it's just about the only way to go. It takes a little extra work, but once you're done, you'll be happy with the results and have a really unique model to put on your shelf. That's it for part one, and we hope you'll come back for part two when we'll wrap things up and show the completed model and all of the work that it takes to get there. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review, and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Or you can find us on Facebook or our website right on replicas.com. Thanks.